Welcome to HBCU Digest, Digest After Dark. I am your hostess, Tiffany. It's been a while. Happy New Year. Um, We have a light cast tonight. This will be um, a fairly short, shorter than usual podcast that will be led, honestly, by ORS because we are talking about sports. And if you've been here for the last three and a half, four years, you know, I do not do sports. Um, so ORS will take over, but <laughs> we have Laurel the Aggies, Midnight Winston, and ORS. Eric is um, off the show. KD is busy tonight. Eric is off the show because of good things, employment things. So, like, he up out of here. But, um, yeah, so ORS, you can lay the foundation, and we'll go from there. All right, cool. So, obviously, we're all here because of – Prime time, Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, uh, whatever you want to call him. Um, but yeah, like I don't know. I want kind of want to go live. I want everyone else. Everyone else. Everyone else, everyone else has to say because I don't know. Like I want to hear what Laura has to say about about Deion. Like, what do you think? So, so we talked about this as a show two years ago when he got hired, and we all had our thoughts feelings and opinions about how things were going to go. And now two years later, he's had this kind of um, acrimonious exit. And um, what do you think two years later, Laurel? Hmm. Well, like I said before we started that you were born before 1997. You should not be surprised by anything. To quote his 1994 non-chopping, non-charting single must be the money. It must, it is. Um, I don't know, I, I agree with what more informed people's take has been on this in that like they don't, they don't think that he's a sellout for leaving. They understand it, especially if you're thinking in a football context. But I do think that he did sell Jackson State, Jackson, Mississippi, alumni, et cetera. I think he sold them a dream. Um, Invoking God probably wasn't the best choice. We will probably see in the future about that. Um, But yeah, I just think, you know, the real losers in all of this are the students, the rest of the students, the players that he's not taking with him, Um, the future of the program, the future for the school. So I think it's less so on what what Dion's gonna do. It's more so like, what is everybody else gonna do? And what are we, the general public gonna do? Are we gonna abandon Jackson State now that he's gone and now that he's at Boulder? Or was it just always fake from jump and we were only in it for Dion? I was not, but. So so to that point, kind of roll over to Winston, because I know obviously Winston has an extensive history around the game of football, especially the high school kind of high school to college transition area of football. I know the state of Michigan has the number three quarterback in the nation right now is going out to Oregon who will be playing against Dion probably next year from Tiffany's former high school King. (laughs) I like it. I love the history lesson. But, but just to kind of set Winston up, talk about from a, from a football, what do you think from a football perspective in terms of recruiting, in terms of Pac-12 recruiting and how that intersects with what's going on currently right now, where you have a lot of people, even from your city of, of Detroit, going to Pac-12 schools. Yeah, so shout out to Adar, who's a Midnight Golf alum, who is Dante's sister. Um, so there's a direct connect there in general in that space. Um, I think this, this move is probably – uh, hinged greatly on the conference that he's going to, because as we know, from a sports perspective, uh, USC and UCLA will be leaving the PAC 12. So that leaves space for someone to be the flagship or standout institution in that space. So from Colorado's perspective, it makes a lot of sense for them to bring in somebody who already hold, has a name and publicity and um, proven track record in that space to be like, Hey, we, this is a perfect opportunity for us to try to transition into the space of, standing out in this in this conference there's going to be a hole left um a large hole the la market to be able to say that we can fill and maybe be the the team that's the face of 
the Pac-12 um, in that space. Coach Prime's already offered two Detroiters um, to come out to Colorado since since he's been there. Um, two high-level Detroiters who had some coaching changes at University of Cincinnati, um, where there's mm-hmm. still a, a vacancy that's that's there. So he they, he quickly swooped in and, and recruited those two students. So that's I think the sauce. Yeah. So you know. Um, yeah, the, and, and great history. Cincinnati has since his uh, recruiting Detroit. So again, finding those holes and trying to plug those in. He's already had contact with over 200 recruits since being named the head coach of Colorado. Maybe some before he was named the head coach of Colorado. I don't know. That's I guess that remains to be seen. Um, I mean, you know, look, he's doing what Dion does. You know, to to Laurel's point, you know, if you were born before 1997, you already kind of know how this. You know, this, none of this is a surprise. None of this is a shocker. Um, I think it, it makes sense from a professional standpoint for him to, you know, people question whether or not Colorado was the best move. But I think what they're looking at and what he probably was looking at is the opportunity there. Like I said, with with the L.A. market leaving the Pac-12, there, somebody can stand up and be the dog. And if you think you have the resources, the power, the influence to be able to be that flagship institution in the Pac-12 conference, then maybe you would take a job like that instead of taking somewhere else where you might have to do more climbing in order to put yourself in that position professionally and put the school that you're at in position to be successful. So, um, you know, by all accounts, everybody's ready to roll with Coach Prime, including, unfortunately, maybe some of the students that were at Jackson State, that the ones he's going to be taking with him um, in the Louis luggage, and then the ones who are not considered in the Louis luggage, who he said maybe y'all might not want to get in the portal because the grass might not be greener the on the other side. The Samsonites. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so y'all might want to enjoy Jackson, even though I'm not going to be there with you, you know, kind of deal. So I think from a recruiting standpoint, not, ain't nothing, everything's rolling. Nothing, nothing is off track as far as that goes. Like I said, he's, if anything, he has more resources, more opportunities. He'll have more staff coaches and, and auxiliary staff at Colorado than he was able to have at Jackson State. So it's, the market is, the, the word is out on the street and it's already moving. So, um, it remains to be seen how how that goes, but Detroit's on board. I know that, and you know m- most other recruits that are high level and were already interested in even following the Jackson, Mississippi, um, don't seem to have any problem following the border, Colorado. Yeah. <clears throat> so I guess for me, from like an HBCU perspective, like my brother, I, I've said it before, you know, played at a a D one MEAC school, and I just feel bad for. Jackson State fans, because their administration have has allowed Dion to manipulate things. Like I've never heard, in my opinion, of a coach taking a new job before the bowl game and coming back to coach the bowl game. Like I always thought, well, once you put the new hat on, once you go from the J to the C, you gone. Like we appreciate your time. Come back when we when we when we, when we honor the championship team in twenty years to winning the swag. You can come back and throw the J back on, but you're gone. He also, in my opinion, violated NCAA rules by saying that Shador was it was y'all quarterback before he transferred. Like he he can't legally transfer to the semester's over. <laughs> so I think that. I think that he I think that the the I think that for Jackson, for what Ashley Robinson, the AD has done, has given Dion a bit too much power. And that power may clip him at Colorado because they're gonna be looking for a reason to bring in the NCAA to say, oh, hold up. You just said you just bait like you are still if you are if you signed a contract for Colorado, that's cool. If Jackson State will allow you to coach, that's fine. But these students are in, are NCAA athletes. They're not they're not your students. They're NCAA athletes. They follow under right. those rules. So you are an adult. You can do what you want to do. But they're amateurs. So you can't claim this student. He hasn't passed protocol. He hasn't been accepted into Colorado yet. Like there's all these different things that have happened. So I do think that like he is already in some hot water because there are going to be people who are going to see him take the Travis Hunters and the more top recruits are going to say, "Oh, hold up now." Let's go ahead and put some eyes there. And secondly, for Jackson, the sad part and the challenge for this, I mean, challenge that they're going to face is that the financing that they've, quote unquote, received was Dion dependent. 
Like, yes, he got the practice field fixed, but you know how much deferred maintenance will cost to keep that practice field from flooding in the future? If if they couldn't afford to make the drainage work in 2019, who's going to have that money in 2023? So we lost Winston. But I just feel like that's just my, my two cents. I think that there's going to be some major issues. And I think that Dion has played Jackson – and their administration has allowed them to play them. Like when I saw how he rushed them off the field at the SWAC championship game to clearly catch a flight, it's like, come on, bro. This your last – your son over here waving the flag. You told me to put the flag down and let's go. It's I, always I heard gonna all, be on show. I'm about to say, it's, it's, that's, that, it's on brand. It's absolutely on brand. It's nothing – again, it's – it's always been the Dion show, children and sons notwithstanding. I mean, I. what else do you expect from a Leo man? I know I said this about Wayne Frederick. What else do you expect from a Trini man? Now it's what do you what else do you expect from a Leo man? The Leos are Leoing. The I mean, like personally, I find the I find I don't think he's transparent, but I feel like the way in which he's been showboating has been very much out in the open. It's been very much in 8K HD. I don't, none of this was secret, but I think we are now in a society where people just go for headlines. They don't, they just read whatever the top headline is. You know that, you know that. You know, and so they're not gonna, and they're also not gonna ask any questions. People only show up for the fire. They're not gonna ask, well, who lit the match? So I, think I just point, think that, you know. I think people wanted to believe that he was like since Like they really wanted to believe like, oh, oh yeah. Don't, don't use his terms. <laughs> but I do, I think it's true. I think those people that were really hinging on to Laurel's point, like, well, maybe, you know, maybe he really wants to be here. Maybe he thinks God called him to JSU to, and for, you know, in defense of him, I don't know. Maybe it was a two year bid. I don't know. Maybe God said two, three years and then we're moving. I don't I don't know. That's between him and, and Yahweh himself. I don't know. But it, <laughs> it seems it seems questionable. Not Yahweh. It but the seems, wind beneath questionable. The wind beneath Dion's wings was George Floyd because Shannon Sharp yeah. mistakenly said that, oh, well, Dion, you know, he brought all the focus on HBCUs. No, he didn't. They already I had did. the focus prior to the protest and George Floyd. And then that just pushed it along. And then his deal and situation was already happening at the same time. So really, and not to, and this is not to just, you know, put shadow over like what his network and connections brought to Jackson State, but let us not act like he didn't ride that wave that started before he even started at Jackson. And that yeah. is what we So let's about. pause there. Let's pause there. Cause you have a good point, Laurel, because and we all know, obviously, with George Floyd's murder, white guilt and white guilt came with money. And would y'all would y'all put the hiring of Deion Sanders and his now behavior um, in the same vein or line as the official Black Lives Matter Foundation and their no. scamming no. ways? I wouldn't do that. Like you relied on like people believing in white guilt and money and it being the perfect opportunity. But but Dion to get what you wanted. Dion Dion had been campaigning for a head coaching job for like 10 years. No one would give him one. And he refused to be but Bamani Jones said it best. He wanted to be a head coach. He didn't want to be an assistant. Yep. Now what 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 benefited him? I, didn't I don't want to play the game. I don't. I don't mean to bring this up, but Jackson State had a power vacuum. Their former president got into some legal trouble. We won't mention what that legal trouble was, mm. and the athletic director became the pseudo president, and that's who hired Dion. Was the AD because they had no president at the time, and even about HBCUs and George Floyd. Let's not forget George Floyd grew up, was born and raised in the CUNY Homes projects which are literally facing Texas Southern University and where the, a lot of the groundswell for George Floyd started was in Houston at Jack Yates High School, uh, all black high school, 
in a Texas Southern University a HBCU. So did did Dion ride the wave in a sense, but he was brought to Jackson State because of a power vacuum, because no other HBCU president would have hired him. Let's also not forget that he had to go get a degree to get his Jackson, Jackson State job at Talladega. So and Talladega's president and the former president, we're not going to talk about the, the, the coalescing of things, but yep. Dion is a very specific test case because he's not Eddie George at, te- at Tennessee State where Glenda Baskin Glover had a relationship with him. He was philanthropic towards the school and towards Nashville. She brought him in. She wanted to, you know, bring some bring, you know, some stability to the program, so forth and so on. No. Dion was hired before their current president. Their AD made those moves. So I think that there's the Black Lives Matter Foundation are crooks. I'll say it. They bought those expensive houses and much other stuff they did with people's money to build safe spaces or whatever. I didn't know safe space. I didn't know black communities were in Malibu. But, you know, they can do what they want to do. The difference with Dion is that they didn't give that money to Jackson State University. That money went to Deion Sanders, and he spent it as he saw fit. He spent that Affleck money on the field. He spent the money he got from Michael from Michael Strahan on suits for the students. They, they didn't buy suits for the business school. They didn't buy suits for the engineering school. This was all money that Dion got, he had access to, that he directed. So quite frankly, I would say that – Jackson State is in for a really rude awakening. I wouldn't be surprised if they had some sacks issues in a couple of years, not because of anything they've done wrong, but because they allowed him to move like he was a board. He's not, he's not the chairman of the board. He was appropriating funds like a board chair. And we just have to say it like there has been a dereliction of duty by the board of Jackson State the presidential vacuum and by the AD, by Charles McClelland at the SWAC office and much other people who allowed this man to literally become the face and the power broker of HBCU football. He's on national television talking about Alabama State and getting enough money to go to UCLA, which is, which is the reason why Eddie Robinson Jr. wanted to smack him because he tried to embarrass him on television. But no one wants to go into the details of this man. I'm going to stop talking of course. because it's so, of course. it's so detailed. I don't know. I just you don't can't. think. I don't think he should. You can't it. stop talking. Winston, am I, am I, am I telling lies? No, you, I mean, you, you broke it down. I'm glad you brought it to the Tala part because just, it just goes into the, the siphoning of the sector for him to position himself to Laurel's point, the way that prime does, you know, like I'm going to do, I'm gonna ride this wave. I'm gonna get the degree because I can't give because I don't want to play the game to her point the way that it's normally played. So I know I gotta go get the degree. Who's gonna give me? Who's gonna allow me the opportunity to do that? Oh, Talladega College, who creates numerous avenues, including the first ones to really delve into people that are getting out coming out of jail to be able to mm-hmm. get the opportunity to go to college and educate themselves. So who's gonna allow me the platform to be able to do so? Our institutions, because that's what they do is they they find those ways. Speaking those- of graduation. Speaking of you know, all, all the things we need you to do in order to get that, you know, whatever. And now you can position yourself where you don't have to be an assistant, like Bumani said, where you can just go straight in, go from head guy to head guy and not have to go the normal channels that most of us have to, which, again, to your point, probably leads to Eddie's Robinson's frustration of all of this stuff that, you know, you get to do, which he's been enabled to do in that space. And I'm saying this as somebody, Deion Sanders, the reason why I played football in the first place, like that was why I wanted to play football is because of Deion Sanders, but I can separate the man. have bro. to separate. Yeah. 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 I can, yeah, I can separate the man from the mission. That's, yeah. <laughs> Laurel, Laurel knows this growing up where we grew up D when I became like, when I became be able to remember football, Dion was with the racial slurs playing at RFK stadium. They had, well, they, maybe they had just opened FedEx field, but he was either at RFK or just opened at FedEx field. And my family were big commander fans or as Bomani calls the commando fans. <laughs> um, I had a, I have a, there's a picture of me in like probably first grade with a Deion Sanders, you know, Redskins jersey on. Like it just, so I think the challenge mm-hmm. is that there's all these different people have done things to enable him to go from offensive coordinator at a charter school in South Dallas 
to now being a power five Pac-12, you know, state flagship head coach. He's done that in two years. He's went from being an offensive coordinator at a charter school in South Dallas. And if you've been to South Dallas, it's South Dallas. To now being at the University of Colorado in two years, two years, like literally from 2020, 2022. And it required the president of Talladega, the president at Jackson, the AD at Jackson. It required all the people from Pepsi, the Aflac, so all these people who have all done things for Deion Sanders to get him from sitting in his house coaching high school football to now having to now being the highest paid employee in the state of Colorado. It's really crazy when you think about it. From from being where he was to where he is now. Like at the time he was doing, he was doing a show with Jamie Dukes on Barstool. That was his job. Let's not mention the stool, please. I'm just saying that's what, that's, that's what he came. So, and the last thing I want to say is that the reason why I'm also upset with Ashley Robinson and Charles McCullough is that he came into Jackson state and said, I'm not going to wear Nike. I refuse to wear Nike. Nike did me wrong in the nineties. I'm an Under Armour guy. Under, I'm an Under Armour guy. I'm an Under Armour, I'm an Under Armour guy. He forced Jackson State to cancel their their order. He twisted Kevin Plank's arm to get to get Jackson all brand new Under Armour uniforms, everything Under Armour. He his first second get off the plane at Colorado. He's dripped in Nike. Why off the plane? Because Nike had because Colorado has a evergreen contract with Nike. They're never leaving Nike. And he don't have enough pull. And the sad part is that he he's done this and he he made he forced Jackson to cancel a contract to have to hire him for the same company he's gonna be wearing for the rest of his life as long as he's at, as long as he's in Colorado. Which will only be a year. But the real question in all of this with all of the, you know, puppet string pulling, because that's how this has been. Um, the real question is how many will be coming to collect? Because you're saying, oh, well, they did all this stuff because it's Dion. Don't nobody offer something without getting something in return. And not just Jackson State, but many others may feel they didn't get, you know, the ROI, the ROI that they were sold. See, it's one thing you can, he can probably get away with scamming the students, but he not going to get away with scamming everybody else. And then when you mentioned, um, what's that other child name? The one of the ones he bring in along with his sons. Travis Hunter. And so like with Travis Hunter, I am more than sure that the powers that be in NCAA are still mad and others who will not be named, but, you know, other coaches in the college football world that are also, you know, grossly overpaid and have an ax to grind. They may have been quiet, but they are watching all of this just like we are. But unlike us, they have, you know, they might want to get their get back and they might not may not get it like by the time he really starts at Colorado. But who's to say that something else may not come out or some other different puppet strings that are pulled by white hands uh, will not catch him back. And that's, you know, I'm not saying that this will happen. I'm just saying it's yet something else that really won't be surprising when it does, because I ref- I don't care. He may be Dion, but as we have seen from others, well, I'm not black. I'm okay. Yeah. And you still got caught up eventually. Mm-hmm. It may not have happened. It may not happen six months from now, but it happens. So I'm just wondering when is when is Dion gonna have his blank blank moment? And you can fill in those blanks. I guess his like, reckoning. But Tiffany, let me ask you this, right? His, his like, I, 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 I ask anybody you this. So all this money has supposedly come into Jackson State, right? Mm-hmm. So when we get into next fall and Jackson State looked at their balance sheet, and they're like, we got this new practice field, but where's the maintenance budget for that? We got this new weight room, but where's the maintenance budget for that? We got this new these new uniforms, but 
we can't afford to store all these. Like when, when they start looking at their accounting and they're looking like, we had all this money last year. We know, I know we didn't hey, spend it all. Will, I, will, I want to know, I want to see if Jackson State's board, president, AD have enough gall to come out and say like, Dion took money that was allocated for Jackson State and took it with him to Colorado. Because we know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that he did it for sure, but if all this money is coming to Jackson State, it should be still at Jackson State. They should be able to invest that, get interest off of it, throw it into an endowed account, and use that in the future. Yes. But even if that's not the case, they should still be planning to use those facilities to generate some income or income revenue, whatever. Like, we do not have time to be like, oh, dang, we're a little short, ain't we? When you have real things that you can use to make money. Like, if it's all new, if it's all running good, what'd you say? You can't make them enough a locker room? Hey, figure that out. A summer camp, mini camp, back to back, whatever you gotta do, figure it out. Cause it's all Gym new space right rentals. now. But, they, hey, we have don't you? Hey, they they have a lot of people who freelance and do stuff like they can rent a locker, run a little exercise, fitness, whatever it is. Whatever it requires a little creativity, and it can be done. But I mean, when have we not made a dollar out of fifteen cents? I'm but also saying. keep in mind, he wasn't at Texas Southern in Houston or at PV or even at Tennessee State. He was in Jackson, Mississippi. And what we know about Mississippi is that it is the poorest and the most major it is the most black state. So I just don't have a lot of faith that there's a lot of opportunity there to, to make the money it's going to take to keep these facilities up and quite frankly we all know the ad is vying for another job he ain't gonna be there much longer we know mcclellan's gonna be dipping soon because he ain't gonna be able to top this year so i just see a, la- a very large power vacuum coming and i think Again. that i think that dion's yeah. arrival to the swack will lead towards what's happening in the MEAC now because right now people are people are riding high, people are writing checks they can't cash. Everybody is on this big HBCU tip, but when this economy slows down in a couple months, it's already slowing. But when it slows down for real, for real, when that student debt starts hitting people again in June, it's going to look real, real, real different. Allegedly. <laughs> We're not I mean, speaking that until it's a don't even play. I mean, I mean looking at look at looking directly at Laurel, AT was riding high winning celebration bowls. AT was riding high in athletics. They ain't won a thing since they left the MEAC. But we don't need to, because guess what? Aggies do. No, they don't. Um, right. <laughs> they don't. This one does not. But I'm I just think saying least- that I know. They they left they oh, left no. the media talking about we were coming from more cup. We we're gonna win, we we're gonna dominate the big south. They have not won in any sport since they left the MEAC. But we can't go back to the MEAC because the people left in the MEAC are still miserable. Even when we were still in the MEAC, nobody was going to them games. So what is the truth? No, MEAC is on life. Everybody support. Was, that ain't where you want to be. Everybody thinks anyway. I'm just saying it's like and this is care. my this is my overall irritation with all of this, regardless of what conference we're talking about. Even ignoring Dion, because there's other stuff that already existed before he even glazed over there. People are just very unserious. These are the same the same people complaining are the same people that only care about their school's team, if it even is their school, when it's homecoming. And so it's like you don't show up to them conference games. I mean, I definitely it's more evident. It's more evident when it's basketball season. It'd be me, five other students, and the rest are people that graduated in 1958. Like, stop. <laughs> stop it. Like, somebody is lying. And so, like, like I said, like, at this point, even if you can say, you know, Dion got away with a bag of money, it's like, well, what are we going to do 
not just in spite of him, but it's like, what are we going to do with the rest? What are we going to do with what's left? Because whenever that gap does hit us, you know, Mackenzie Bezos only got so much money she's going to give. We should have, I, I think for at least this point, there's only so much that we can do as alumni, as a populace is going to take everybody else, including white people, um, is going to take change of legislation because I think we're gonna get to the point where, again, we're still at a deficit. So no, no matter what we do and whatever Hail Marys happen from year to year, we can't predict, we can't account for that, you know, for sure. Those are not concrete. So it's like, what, what else can we do? I just need the blame game to stop. I'm tired of this, oh, well, y'all should, y'all alumni, y'all should give back. If y'all give back, then that's why, it's like, that's not how that works, son. That's not how that works. And then for my HBCUs that are in these states, where, I mean, we barely survived through the midterm. Georgia was looking real shaky. <laughs> but even if they don't, even if they don't win those major elections, they're still at the school K through 12 level. So it's like, and that shit rises up. So it's like, what are we going to do to counteract that? It's very, you know, we're in danger beyond just looking at numbers. So it's like, I think people have to move beyond the celebrity um, of any one person. Okay, because I'm tired. I'm tired. Or any or even with A&T and, and saying, which is why I told you, or it's, I don't really care about that because like I said, my school was my school when we were losing. I told people I only went to game, games for the band and the fried fish and I stand by that. Okay, Shut exactly. Up. Them being undefeated and, and oh, now they're in the big South and it, I don't care. <laughs> I care say about Aggie Land. Say it again for them. Say it that's what it form. always was about. So on that, I'll say Jackson, Jackson will be fine. Um, I feel for the students and the staff and everybody else that's there that does their work every day and they did it when nobody was looking and when nobody cared and when their water was shut off. I feel for those people because those are the people that have to deal with it. Not all these other you know, talking hours heads online. with no celebrity. These talking, heads, these talking heads and talking necks online can say whatever they want. <laughs> but the people that have to deal with it, the students especially my students that they started off school online in a pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Like that's who this is about at the end of the day. So I don't really care, you know, what Dion does. I also care about his sons. They students too. What about them? What about what Shiloh. they Shiloh. Poor Shiloh. Poor Shiloh. Shiloh is, he loves Jackson State. He's he living leave. his best life in Jackson State. And he I know leave. he did, but like, again, what's more important? Is it, are we, are they on the Dion show too? He got three kids at Jackson. He got Shalomi, his daughter, on the basketball team. Will she make? Will she make the team at uh, Colorado? No, she might want. She might want to stay. She might stay at Jackson. He got I'm Shalomi, Shalo, and Shador. And honestly, I feel bad for Shador because right now he's putting up good numbers, good stats. He's the man. He about to get rocks next year. They O line is terrible. Terrible. He about to get rocks. You seen USC recruiting mm -hmm. class? Yeah. They play USC on the road. It's going to be bad. <laughs> it's going to be bad. This so, season, hey, the man. inaugural season for Coach <laughs> Prime is going to be a lot of patience talk. They play Oregon, Oregon State, USC, and UCLA. And they, in week one, they got TCU <laughs> on the road in Cal. <laughs> God told me y'all need to be patient yeah. with me. God said, when I come to Boulder, y'all got to be patient with me. It's going to take time. <laughs> no, God didn't say nothing. Jesus said, now why am I in it? Why is my name all taking a bang out in it? No stand like, supposed to mm -mm. Think, lightning might strike. Here, the one thing that he said that I always was like, yo, what are you talking about, man? Like he was talking about, you know, I did what I did, and, and God sent me here to, to res resurrect this great program. And I'm sitting there like, one, Colorado ain't been great since like 92. That was 30 years ago. Coach Mack, they, he's the only one that has success in yeah. Boulder, Colorado. And, he, and Coach Mack had success because of racism. Because back then, because keep in mind, like, Eric Bieniemy from New Orleans by way of California. Cordell Stewart from New Orleans. Um, Detroit, Detroit, New Orleans, and L.A. is where he built that program. And on. those, back then, programs in those areas didn't have – black quarterbacks they didn't have many black receivers in the sec and mm. usc didn't take no black people 
straight on. People don't forget. People don't remember. OJ transfer. Yep. Keyshawn Johnson transfer. Yep. Ryan Lott transfer. They didn't take any. Of them, they didn't take any of them because USC had very high academic standards at the time. Yeah. All of them kids were transfers. Yep. Well, Colorado could eat, but it's a new day. You know, they, one day I saw like the the university board just recently changed their academic standards to allow for a general studies course because Colorado couldn't hit the transfer portal because they wouldn't, because if you didn't have credits in a major, you couldn't transfer into Colorado. Mm-hmm. You would lose your eligibility because they, that school's mm-hmm. academic standards didn't allow for general studies. But what they have now, Which is part of general studies. Of course. So now all, See, so now they have they're because they've, They've basically lowered their academic standards to play football. And this has all been in play since early November when the talk started with Coach Prime in Colorado to yeah. build this out. They passed, this is they, passed, they, program. they passed the rule in November, like you said. Yeah, no, it's been the conversation. It's been early November. It's been the conversation's been going on since then. That's funny. Like, this is an R1 school already changing their standard. This school is older than the state of Colorado itself. Okay. <laughs> Like, that's very, mm-mm. see, like I said, this is going to look real ugly. But see, this is, this is, overall, this whole story has the same theme, desperation. When you are desperate. <laughs> you do you weird. Desperate for any care. You're desperate for any care, you know, your arm painting you bad. You're going to get, you're going to go to the first snake oil salesman you see coming across that hill. It don't matter what he got in that damn bottle. He put glitter in it. He made it sound real good. He said it tastes like grape juice. Okay. And you're like, you know, at this point, I just need my arm to start hurting. So I'm I'm just gonna take it. And then it looks good. You see all the glitter look all shiny. Your arm actually start hurting for a little bit. And then, oh well, I gotta go. That's my last bottle. Okay, bye. And then now this bottle is, you know, next to the Pepsi logo. And it's is you done for. And now your arm hurt. Now it's falling off. Ancient times, you know, dentists, when they were pulling your teeth in ancient times, dentists would break your fingers or your toes when they were pulling your teeth so you wouldn't feel the pain. Hmm. So they basically would, they would send pain to other parts of your body because when you're, basically the way your mind works is that when you break this, and I pull this, it's going to hurt the same because you both hurt versus I just pull one thing or the other. And the same thing you're saying, it's, it's all snake oil. It's all, I just want to see, I'm just ready for next year when that team is O and... Five. Six, yeah, going to UCLA on the road, and he ain't getting paid for that flight. Talking about Alabama State, you gonna pay out your pocket to go to LA and get your ass whooped? Oh, he not getting that package that what's the name from the Sooners got, where they paid him double, flew his, moved his house, no, pay for his house, a million dollar house, and flew his oh, whole Lincoln family Riley out in him. Yes. Those nah, he ain't getting, they he, he ain't all getting, out. He ain't getting Raleigh money. Yeah, no. He not getting flued out? Mm, shame. Wow. But I do wonder, what do you guys think, before we even get to this period, this time next year, what do you think, like, in terms of, like, other outside factors? And that's, like, any other school, any other coaches, and stuff. Not even just scandal, but just other things that could, you know, knock him off his square in terms of like, okay, in his mind, I'm sure he's thinking, well, yeah, I signed, the ink is dry, I'm gonna be at Boulder. It's a, it's a lot. I think, I think politics and higher ed custom is what will be his downfall because even when he was at Jackson State and he started talking in and around things that had have nothing to do with football. But mm-hmm. I think because he is Deion Sanders and he was a black man and he at Jackson or was at Jackson State, they were like, oh we can't really say too much. But like you can't do that. You can't do that in Colorado. A those not your people. B, you supposed to be winning on the field. Sorry, don't talk it's like how they treat professional athletes. Like you get to talking, no, you supposed to be dribbling that ball or running that, running that down the field. So like I think that that's what is going to make things uncomfortable for him. Um, I don't know if they would ever like pull his coat and be like, "Hey, come to my office, let's talk about this." But like you cannot showboat in the way that he is accustomed to showboating when it's just us. 
You got it. Gary Poole just called Tiffany. You didn't see him at the press conference? He used Not to do press conferences in Jackson in a beanie, hoodie, <laughs> hadn't shaved in two weeks, 10 gold chains. Look, the one thing that he's going to face there to, to answer Laurel's question, I don't think the NCAA moves slow. They take years. I mean, they you could do something in 98, they catch you in 06. So he NCAA is not gonna be a factor. Jackson, they need to be worried about the NCAA in about three, four years. But and, but I think the I think what was going to catch him and what could slip him up is the transfer portal because there are very strict rules about when you can contact players who are on another person's roster. So mm-hmm. if I'm if I'm on if I'm on scholarship at let's say the University of Michigan, I'm on I'm fifth string cornerback. I'm behind that that boy from Gross Point who looked real good. Will Johnson. Um, yeah, I'm behind Will Johnson, right? I know I'm not going to play. He a freshman. He been locking this side down. I ain't got no chance. Until my semester is over, I have notified my head coach. I've withdrawn myself from the university and entered the transfer portal. Only then can I be in contact with another coach or another program. If you contact me beforehand, I have violated the terms of my scholarship. And I think what's going to happen is that he's going to – there. so there are players on every coach's roster where the coach ain't going to play him, but he don't want to lose him. And he's going to pluck someone's current transfer portal player, and they're going to go back and see – and ask and ask like, can you put them phone records for me? Oh, you talked to Deion Sanders on November 29th. The semester ended December 13th. Hold on now. And I think I think that's what's going to catch him is that he's so desperate to your point for players because he knows that roster Colorado's garbage. I mean, it's booty. He's not. He's going to get embarrassed. He's trying to next year. His goal is just to lose, not to get embarrassed. If it, with his current roster, he's going to get embarrassed. And he no. and he didn't, and, and no offense to Shador, but Shador and Caleb Williams. Shout out to DC. Shout out to all the DC ness here. Even though he's from Bowie, um, but <laughs> still gorgeous, Prince George's. Yeah, he's from Bowie. He, he, he don't live in the city, no. but um, that's my type of investigative journalism. But so like, here's I, a, to, I like that to go for oh. like to, to that to piggyback that point. We got everywhere he's been. It's, this is compliance has been an issue. Everywhere, when he was in high schools, when he was at J, compliance. So if you talking about they're talking about building out this coaching staff, y'all better make sure the compliance staff. Is legit because this gonna hmm. it's gonna be some stuff coming down. So you better and, make sure you're surrounded with somebody who knows what they're doing. It's gonna get ugly fast. My last point about him being a grifter is that he talked about hiring Willie Simmons and all the great coaches in the swag. He's made two hires so far: two white men from Power Five schools. He didn't hire he Thurman, who got the number one defense in the FCS. He didn't hire. He didn't even bring his D coordinator. He didn't even bring Dennis Thurman, his D coordinator, number one defense in the FCS. He went and hired the assistant defensive back coach from Alabama. Curious, sir, and curious, sir. Well, hmm. well that's a very well, slimy well, snail trail. Well, that hey, we believe. If we want to stay in Colorado, we got to believe. We got to surround ourselves with the resources. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> to be able to stay in Colorado. <laughs> We gotta believe in the resources. Resources, right? Resources, right? Resources. <laughs> like I said, at this point, it's all in a matter of who still is, you know, believing in what the snake oil does. I mean, I'm just saying it you could be, you know. It, I said it. It could. It just matters. I don't know. I think. Especially in these current times, I just I personally wouldn't put all my chips in a 75% uh, white majority uh, basket. But, you know, that's just me. I mean, I'm not Dion, uh, but I don't know. I think based on that, I don't know. I don't know if there's someone already in Boulder that is that can quote unquote crack the whip gently. 
um, on Dion to reel him back. I don't know. I'm sure they probably have someone that's going to try to engage him in media training. Or they might go with like, no, just let him go. Let him rip. He, he's amazing. Da, 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 da. At least initially. Because again, with this is still, we're not even close to fall. I'm sure by August that there will be some meetings and some conversations. I'm sure that I don't I don't think that any of this is going to generate, you know, a boost in enrollment. It's still Boulder, Colorado. Um, but I'm sure there'll be more people at the games, especially that first game, just to see, okay, what he gonna do. And then it's just a matter of like week to week. Is he gonna is he or isn't he? Is he or isn't he? So I don't know. For everybody else though, I'm like, are y'all all of a sudden gonna actually care about Boulder games on Saturdays? Like, really? Just because he's there? What if he can't talk? What if his schedule, like, I feel like it's also going to be a difference of, like, in Jackson, he, and he did, he can kind of run the show. Can't do that in Boulder. I don't care how desperate they are. They ain't crazy. Okay? They still going to have, the, le the leash may be invisible, but the leash is still going to be there. So... And that, and this is also all predicated that nothing else crazy happens because also coming with Dion is a spotlight. So there may have been a lot of goofy stuff going on in Boulder, and we had no clue because it's Boulder. Yeah. yeah. But now that Dion's there, <laughs> all the all the stage lights, spotlights, storm lights, and everything is on them now, and it may backfire for them too. It may shine on the rough spots they don't want nobody to see. So. Mm. But I just hope Jackson comes out okay. They will, like yeah. you said, they'll be fine. Jackson State will be Jackson State. You know, it won't be what the the what the salesman sold them it was going to be, maybe. But it's still it was it was a great institution before he got there, and they're going to be great after he leaves. Maybe not the ways mm -hmm. they thought, but Jackson State's going to be fine. Jackson State will be okay. To just re repurposing and re and understanding where they where they fall and being and playing to your strengths, like we talk about all the time, mm -hmm. which one of the things that most our schools are. Are good at it's just understand what are you good at like what do we do well like we're not going to be you know some of these other institutions but we can do what we do at a high level we can exactly. put, we can turn out students and give them opportunities that other institutions would not give mm -hmm. and turn out great people like we'll be doing that we'll still be doing that we might not have no uh no limos with lamborghini limos um with girls in them but we you know we still gonna have some degree holders some people that you know are, are change agents and making differences in the communities that we that are important for us to make in states like mississippi where it matters having educated black mm -hmm. people i mean that's I, it oh y'all are right i just i just don't think it's gonna end well for the swag or for jackson only because like no because their alumni i think their alumni realize like like d i'm there for a short time or whatever but these other coaches like at the school that i went to are really trying to like use like oh Dion mentioned my name let's let's move it about and the challenge is when we having swag media days next year and only people there are Tali and Steven a couple other people when we have you know when we look at other things like it's, it's I just feel bad because the opportunity for me would have been for McClellan to like actually take a step forward and be Greg Sankey and be the face of the SWAC, like he's the face of the SEC. And they basically were like, oh, what we'll, does we'll, we'll let Dion do it? Or what we'll does let Dion do it? What we'll does let Dion do it? And it's like, most schools, the AD limits the head coach's media availability. They don't just allow, Nick, Nick Saban has a lot of control, but he can't just do whatever he wants to do. Like mm -hmm. he has to be in, there has to be some level of give and take. And he didn't have like Dion basically was like off the off the reins in Jackson. And I just hope it doesn't expose things that it didn't expose cracks in Jackson's foundation. Because now people are gonna say it was better when Dion was there. Mm -hmm. Jackson has an issue, or or that story comes out where they gotta take a bus ride from Jackson to Bethune or to a classic or something. And, oh, well, when the Dion was there, we had flights. And it's, it's going to create issues. 
that I think are going to hurt. I don't think anything that can happen can benefit Jackson in the future because people now are going to say, Dion did this for you, do it for yourself. And Bomani said it best, like, this was about Dion. This was not about Jackson State. This wasn't about HBCUs. This wasn't about Black people. This was about Dion Sanders. And unfortunately, now that he's gone, we're left with this vacuum where you got people like Shannon Sharp and uh, Stephen A. Smith and Michael Strahan and all who are friends with this man, who are trying to speak up for their friend and then turning their backs on the schools they went to, to a certain degree. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, no, no. So I just feel like that's the power vacuum that's going to, like, suck away from HBCUs in the SWAC. And um, I just feel – maybe I'm a pessimist. I was pessimist when he started. I'm a pessimist now he's leaving. I don't feel <laughs> no different, no better about it. And I'll say this. If he flies his black behind from Boulder, Colorado, on a private jet to Atlanta to coach the team, because he ain't going to be there for the practices. He's going to be recruited from Colorado. And they lose the Central in the Celebration Bowl, I'm going to have a cool late smile for the rest of the year. When they lose. When they lose the Central. If you think them boys are focused on winning the game against, you know, after all the stuff that's going on these past few weeks, like you talked about, you wearing J hat one day, then you got the Colorado hat on, now you back with the J hat. If you don't think that affects the, the how this gonna play out in Atlanta, you fooling yourself. You ain't never played sports. Before. I think Dennis Thurman may throw the game. Like, you ain't gonna bring me to Colorado. Like, you get your five mil, but I still gonna make this fifty thousand dollars in Jackson. All right, player. <laughs> all right, all right. What a look, practice squad starters. <laughs> you know, we'll just be in cover two, just cover two all day. We'll just play cover two, don't worry about it. Just whatever they got, we just play, we in two, we just cover two. <laughs> well, it'll be a time, whatever happens. Just sucks that they got to suffer for it. So, we'll do the next pod in Atlanta at the celebration bowl. Wow. Um, thank you so much for watching um, our return episode of Digest After Dark. Y'all let Deion Sanders create a vacuum. I don't know if that'll be the title or not, but we may or may not be back. We all have full-time jobs and we be tired, or at least I'll be tired. But thank you so much for watching. Um, it's been real. <laughs> See y'all.